subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hi, this is DK Singh. In this episode of Politically Correct, I'm going to uh, talk about how BJP President JP Nadda needs to step up now and enable Home Minister Amit Shah to step back a little from his role as the principal strategist, the chief strategist, the chief crisis manager, not only of the BJP, but also of the governments at the center and in the BJP ruled states. Why I'm talking about this today, or the provocation for this, is basically what happened on Saturday. At 11 a.m. on Saturday, you must all be aware how two uh, terrorist outfits, People's Liberation Army and Manipur Naga People's Front, they uh, carried out an ambush of an uh, Assam Rifles convoy, killed five soldiers, including one colonel, and also his wife and eight-year-old child. It was dastardly, cowardly, and I'm sure you, it must be making your blood boil. What was the response? We'll see the response again from the government. We have seen it in the past. But on that day, what was happening? Some other place. So where was the Home Minister then when this happened? He was in Varanasi. Shortly after what happened in uh, Manipur, we heard him uh, addressing uh, an official language conference in Varanasi where he was talking about uh, the usual predictable steps. He was saying how his, the files in his ministry are all written and read in Hindi now. Then he was talking about the epic uh, Ramayana. He was talking about, you know, in Ramayana, you see all Adarsh Pati, Adarsh Patni, like ideal wife, ideal husband, ideal enemy. You see all this in the Ramayana. There was a bigger context. I'm not getting into that. So that was in Varanasi. From there, he moved on to Azamgarh. Now, in Azamgarh, we heard him uh, addressing a gathering where he was talking about, you know, how people have to choose between uh, Achilles Yadav Jam and Yogi Aitnath Jam. So when he was talking about Achilles Yadav Jam, he meant Jam means Jinnah, uh, Azam Khan and Mukhtar Ansari. And Yogi Aitnath Jam was Jandhan, Aadhar and Mobile. So he was asking, he telling people that you have to basically prefer or you have to go for Yogi Aitnath Jam in, this, in the coming elections. That will be in uh, January, February next year. From there, he went to Basti. Now in Basti, he inaugurated a sports event. We saw him lighting a lamp, kicking a football. All the political engagements were there and general optics uh, around it. So that was clear. After that, he had to fly down to Hyderabad. But in between, at 8.24, before he uh, took the flight, at 8.24, he tweets uh, basically his condolence message. That was over nine hours after that Manipur incident. It was a bit unusual for Amit Shah because we have known him. He's a very competent minister and he's very sensitive and serious when it comes to issues concerning national security. And here we are talking about the killing of five soldiers, including a colonel and his family. But then the reaction coming after nine and a half hours, why? Even the prime minister, Prime Minister uh, issued his condolence message on Twitter at uh, 5, 5.20, 5.30. Rajnath Singh, the Defence Minister, he was the first to tweet his condolence message. That was about four hours after the incident. But why this delay in the Home Minister's reaction? Of course, he had a packed schedule in the UP. Call it semi-political, semi-official uh, uh, engagements. But he was so busy. I'm sure he must have been informed telephonically and he must have given instructions. But then he was so busy, so caught up. And he couldn't even have come back to Delhi in normal circumstances. You would expect him to basically call for a review meeting, security review meeting, because it was a very serious incident, especially in Manipur, where you see these, these signs of revival of insurgency. See, after 2003, 2004, there was a long lull. I mean, there were a small incident. There were no bigger incidents. There was no attack on military convoy as such. But in 2015, we saw in Chandil district, that's on the India-Myanmar India border in Manipur, there was this attack on a military convoy by uh, terrorists. 18 soldiers had lost their lives then. And the prime accused uh, in that case was uh, Nikki Sumi. Nikki, Nikki Sumi was this NSC and Khaplang faction. He was a militant commander. He was the prime accused in that. Why I'm talking about Nikki Sumi, I'll come, come, back, come back to it uh, later. But I'm saying this, this was a very dangerous signal coming from Manipur. It was not just an attack. Because there have been talks about China helping the insurgents. There are about half a dozen uh, militant outfits operating in Manipur, but they are not operating in Manipur. They are operating 
from the Manmari side. And the money they get through extortions and all that from Manipur. I mean, they are surviving there, but they are getting a lot of support from China. And this is the assessment of many people in the security establishment. These people pushing it and going for this dastardly act in Manipur, I mean, would have prompted a very serious review. It, it's the third day today, and we have not heard of any such big review meetings. We haven't really heard anything explaining this and how concerned the, uh, the security establishment is. From At least officially, we haven't heard from anybody. And Amit Shah, yesterday, he was in Andhra Pradesh for the day. So he has been very busy. Why I'm talking about this Mani Pradesh is, and Amit Shah, is because this internal security challenges have been increasing. So it's not just about this. We heard uh, RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat uh, talking about the killing of civilians in Jammu and Kashmir. Almost this year, about 30, 30 civilians have been killed in Jammu and Kashmir. So at a time when we are uh, expecting a return to normalcy, uh, this kind, these kinds of uh, attacks are taking place. And no less than Mohan Bhagwat had to point out publicly in Vijay, in, uh, Vijay Dashmiya's speech that, you know, a quote-unquote nationalist-minded civilians are being uh, uh, killed in Jammu and Kashmir, while citizens may be braving it on their own, the efforts to uh, basically curb and finish off terrorist activities needs or need is speeding up. That was Mohan Bhagwat. Uh, that was what Mohan Bhagwat said then. It's, that is Kashmir. You look at other areas also. I mean, Amit Shah has been talking about you know implementing the vision of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to make Northeast quote-unquote, insurgency free. And I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that he's not working on that because we have seen ahead of the Assam Assembly elections how over a thousand insurgents from uh, five militant outfits actually who were fighting for a separate state of uh, Karbi Anglong and uh, North Kachar Hills, they surrendered with their arms uh, in Assam in front of uh, Himanta Biswa Sarva. We have seen other peace efforts so that brings me to that Nikki Sumi, the prime accused of 2015 uh, killing of 18 uh, soldiers. Now, Nikki Sumi, uh, he was in NSC and Kaplang. Because of differences, he formed his own outfit. He calls it Nikki, uh, NSC and Kaplang, uh, Nikki Sumi. He formed it in 2019. But after that attack on the military convoy, that deadly attack, even the NIA had put a reward of 10 lakhs for anybody to give information leading to Nikki Sumi's arrest. Last September, so just a couple of months back, the government of India entered into a ceasefire agreement with Nikki Sumi's outfit. So even though he was a, the prime accused of that uh, deadly attack, even when there was a reward on uh, information on him, 10 lakh reward, the government decided to enter into an agreement in a bid to kind of push the peace process in the northeastern region. In, if you, you must, be, uh, must be recalling it very, very uh, clearly in 2015, there was this framework agreement with the Nagas, Naga outfits, where the center's interlocutor, R.N. Ravi, signed a framework agreement with NSCN, uh, IM, Isak Muya. In the presence of Prime Minister Nain Modi, that was in Delhi, it was a very well-publicized event. Over six years later, a final accord is still eluding us. And we have a differences still persist. The center's interlocutor has been uh, replaced now. But it's such a, a complicated issue there that a solution is still evading us. So that's how complicated things are in the Northeast. The other day we saw how over boundary disputes, how Mizoram police had opened fire uh, at their SMEs counterparts, killing five SMEs uh, police personnel. Again, for days we did not hear much from or anything from uh, either the Prime Minister or the Home Minister because these are sensitive things in the Northeast. These things ha have to be handled very deftly. And this is why you require a lot of time. And it's not just about the Northeast or Kashmir. We saw only last year the Northeast Delhi riots. It was a huge intelligence failure. And it was an international embarrassment because the riots were taking place in the presence of the then US President Donald Trump. So, Home Ministry's job is very difficult. I mean, you may be blaming whoever triggered those rights, but somehow intelligence failure was there and the buck stops at the Home Minister's door at some point of time. 
talk about many other issues. CAA, we have had discussions for months over CAA. Now CAA got that, that, that legislation got uh, parliamentary approval in 2019. It has been two years now. The rules have not been framed yet. Every time somebody questions, puts a, questions in a uh, question in the parliament, the centers replies, okay, uh, we, are, we have got six, six uh, months extension to frame those rules. There have been several such extensions. We don't even know what is the problem. The government has never clarified it to us. Why rules are not being framed? It's not such a complicated issue. But still, that's not happening. So there are many such issues. I mean, when you talk about the Home Ministry, it's the, the most important, in a way, the most important ministry in the government of India. And the Home Minister needs to devote a lot, lot of time, almost full time to the ministry. If the if you don't see Amit Shah uh, basically responding the way probably you would have desired or I would have desired on Saturday, it's not because he doesn't want it. It's not his fault. He's a very competent minister. We know in, when he was a minister in the Modi government in Gujarat, he had been given about a dozen portfolios, I mean, a dozen departments and ministries uh, by CA Modi. He's so competent. Even here, I mean, whenever he gets into a particular uh, thing, you see clear results. I mean, everybody acknowledges in the government that he's a very competent minister. When it comes to national security, I mean, you cannot question him. He is very serious and sensitive about this. And on a day when our soldiers were killed, in normal circumstances, he would have swung into action. But then he was caught up with, as I said, semi-official, semi-official, semi-political engagements. So what is the problem here? The problem is the BJP's over-dependence on Amit Shah to deliver, to pull off electoral results, electoral victories. He has been there since uh, 2013. I mean, even before he became the party president, he, he was the chief strategist of the BJP and he has remained so. Although JP Nadda took over as the BJP national president in January 2020, Amit Shah had been the driving force. I mean, he had been the chief strategist. But somewhere, Nadda has to step up now. He cannot be Amit Shah under study all the time. We know the importance of UP elections for uh, BJP, but for this government, for the citizens also, for all of us, I mean, national security is more important and we probably need the Home Minister's full attention. And that is why I flagged this so about what happened in Manipur on Saturday and how the response came or response or somehow some, some kind of uh, I would say a uh, late response here, which should not have happened. Talking about Amit Shah's role in the BJP, I mean, we know he's indispensable. Everybody agrees that. But the thing is, he has to step back a little somewhere. We have seen in assembly elections, at least uh, from late 2018 onwards, and BJP has been slipping a bit. And we have discussed this issue, how voters vote differently uh, when they have to vote for Modi as the prime minister and when they have to vote for the chief minister. We have had extensive discussion on this, but Amit Shah has not, has never given up his efforts. We saw how aggressively he was campaigning in West Bengal, fully focused on the, on the elections there. But whenever JP Nadda has got a chance, by the way, if you recall in 2017, uh, no, 2019, in fact, looks my election, JP Nadda was in fact the election in charge in UP and he delivered, delivered fantastically. In Bihar, we saw, although the BJP lost several other assembly elections, in Bihar, which uh, where, you know, uh, Amit Shah, he was actually virtually sitting it out. He did not even campaign in Bihar. It was JP Nadda who was leading from the front. And the BJP, and he delivered the spectacular results. And BJP got 74 seats. I mean, it tripped uh, JDU as the big brother in the ruling NDA. So not that JP Nadda cannot deliver. You have to... End basically have more trust in him. All I'm driving at is the BJP can trust JP Nadda to deliver. It does not have uh, to basically uh, drag in the Home Minister for every small thing. So on Friday, the Home Minister was addressing a meeting of all the in charges of uh, 403 assembly constituencies in Varanasi. I mean, the Home Minister himself does not have to do that and JP Nadda can do it as well. Some way, the party needs to trust more than its own president and give him uh, the complete say instead of uh, being the understudy of uh, Amit Shah. He should be running the show completely. 
one never knows. I mean, he may spring a surprise um, to all the skeptics who may think that probably without Shah, the BJP cannot deliver. That's all from me in this episode of Political Correct. Thanks for watching.